There's numerous advantages to virtualizing business critical applications. It often starts with scheduled maintenance. It's really a quality of life issue for the IT staff because the IT staff can now do scheduled maintenance on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. They don't have to wait until off hours or weekends. So first of all, you have better quality of life. I have greater availability because now when I'm doing things such as scheduled hardware maintenance, I'm not having to schedule downtime. I simply live migrate the workload to another server and I do the maintenance and I move on. Also, the fact that you have a common virtualization layer that abstracts underlying physical hardware differences makes it very easy for organizations to plan and execute on disaster recovery. That's also a major benefit. And simply one more is the application lifecycle itself. I have far more efficient testing, patching, I can do very elegant rollbacks when problems occur, and again, the end result of that is often greater uptime by running these mission-critical workloads in virtual machines than running them on traditional physical hardware. The perceived barriers to virtualizing mission-critical workloads are often associated with performance and vendor support. On the performance side, some of the major challenges that had prohibited mission-critical applications from running well on VMs have been solved for more than two years. So simply refreshing server hardware and running a modern virtualization platform will allow those mission-critical applications to run extremely well in virtual machines. Gartner has quite a bit of advice on tuning specific workloads for virtual machines, but in general, any mission-critical application will execute and run well in a virtual machine, and that would include Exchange, that includes SQL Server, that includes Oracle, IBM, DB2, and SAP workloads. The second part that we hear quite a bit from clients on is with vendor support. Now, every major vendor today in the enterprise space will support their applications running in virtual machines. Sometimes the vendor sales staff might mislead clients and give them the indication that those workloads are not fully supported. But that simply is not true. And at Gartner, we're often pointing clients to the support statements from the vendors themselves to make sure that they are getting the correct information. The barriers to virtualization are often associated with people in process today. It simply could be people having the impression that a workload they tried to say virtualized three years ago is going to have the same types of performance challenges that it, that it would have today, and that's simply not true. So it often starts with working with your application vendors and working with the virtualization vendors and looking at the best practices for virtualizing these workloads and then moving forward. The other part, too, is sometimes this does require a push from the top. What we see from many of our enterprise clients today that are doing private cloud workloads is they have an application onboarding process, and that onboarding process will require the application owner to justify why a workload cannot run in a virtual machine. Several years ago, this was the other way around, where the ops team was trying to push the app owners onto virtualization. Now the tide is flipped over, and it's simply the app owners have to justify why they would need physical resources. So having those types of processes in place and checkpoints to get the entire organization onto the virtualization platform has been highly effective for many of our enterprise clients. <laughs>